Does diagnosing your computer sound complicated and overwhelming? In this video, I will show you the easy way to diagnose your computer more efficiently. Hello, my name is Kenny Carfagno, and this is part two of my three-part series on beginner computer repair. If you haven't seen the last video already, you can see it down here in the description. And today's video is going to be on the easy way you can diagnose your computer because it's really not that hard if you know how to do it right. You don't have to have all of the stress and all of the overwhelm that comes with trying to figure it out on your own, and I am here to help you. Also, comment whether or not you have ever tried to diagnose your computer on your own and how you did it, and at the end of this video, I'll be giving away this free diagnostic flowchart, and let's dive into the video. All right, now it's time to get to the actual me and start diagnosing computers. Let's go through the steps. The first thing that we're going to want to do is try to power it on, see if it powers on. Let's say right now it doesn't power on. I tried powering it on, the charger's plugged in, nothing. What we're going to want to do next is test the charger. We're gonna do this by getting a multimeter, which is right here. And we're going to take the red one and plug it in and push it into the center and take the black one and hold it along the outside. Since the red won't fit into it right now, we're going to put a conductive piece. And the result we're going to want to get to see if it works is we're going to want to get, I'm going to have it set to 50 volts, have it, have it get like 1920-ish volts and it works. All right, I'm going to do this, the test, line those up right. And I'm getting 19 and a half volts. So this is working. In the case that the multimeter did not work and the test did not work, we've got no input from the charger. What we're gonna wanna do is test the wall outlet. The way you're gonna do this is going to just take the charger out and plug something else into the outlet, something that you know does work, like a light, whatever. If that doesn't work, you know the outlet's not working and you're gonna to wanna to do the test somewhere else. If the outlet does work though, you're gonna need a new charger. Now if the charger does work and the computer's not receiving the power, what you're going to wanna to do is test the DC jack. There's actually a pretty simple way to do that. Just to be clear, the DC jack is the little port right up here that you plug your charger into. So you're gonna plug it in, see? if you get any signal from the lights. Right now I'm not. Now the lights could be next to the charger, they could be down here, they could be even down on the bottom. But in this case, they're right up here. And you're gonna wanna wiggle it around. If you start getting some lights that start to flicker on and off as you wiggle, you're gonna need a new DC jack. If not, it is a completely different problem and I will be getting into what to do then later. Also, when I say that you're going to need to replace a part, I am not going to cover that in this video as I cover it in part three of this series. So if you need to know how to do that, make sure to head over to part three. Now back to the diagnostics. Now, if it does power on, you are going to want to take a different approach. Also disclaimer, I am assuming that your laptop screen is not powering on or working. If it is, and you are still having issues with your laptop, it is a more complicated problem. Now back to this. If it does turn on with no live screen, you're going to want to listen for beeps. You are going to want to crack it open. Now, take note that I've already taken most of this apart, so it's not this easy. You can, oof, and get this all out. You can see how to properly take apart a computer in part one, where I go over how to do that, along with the safety of repairing your computer so you don't break it or injure yourself. Oh, there we go. Got this cracked open. Pull this off. Okay. If you don't hear beeps, you're going to want to check to see if the video cable is bent or broken. This is the video cable. It runs along up into one of the hinges. And follow it right here is the video cable. 
I'm looking along it to see if there's any visible damage. I am not seeing any, so it looks good. If I were to see damage, you would need to buy a new video cable. Now since the video cable is not bent or broken, what we're going to want to do is plug it into an external screen, an HDTV, anything along the lines of that, and turn it on and see if that screen that we know works gets a signal from the computer. If it does get a signal, then we need to get a new screen, a new display, this thing here. We are now at the part of diagnosing the computer where things start to get a little bit dirtier. We gotta start taking things apart a bit more. So I'm gonna take it apart magically. Pop! It comes right off. I actually did just take it apart earlier and just lay it on top actually. So now, if you have gotten here, you either have one or two problems. You've plugged it into an HDTV display and are still not getting any signal. Or you tried wiggling the DC jack, but you're not getting any signal from that either. Now we're going to want to test some of the internals. The first thing that we're going to want to test is the RAM. So let me take this apart. All right, and now have the motherboard out. You're gonna to need to test the RAM next. The RAM is a random access memory, and there are these two chips here. First, what we're gonna do is we are going to reseat them, make sure that they are in properly, take them out, put them back in, they slide in, and then you push them down, they get a nice little click. Try them both like that. Once you do that, then you test, you put it back together, and you test your computer again. If that doesn't work, so you take one out, you test that one. Then you take that one, you switch it if there's two of them. If not, skip this part. You try the other one, the other side of it. If it still doesn't work, then you do the same thing with the other stick. Try it in one end, test it, take it out, try it in the other end. If that doesn't work, you're going to want to try to get your hands on an extra piece of RAM, say, this is an extra piece that I know works. I will put it in and test it. At this point, if it does work, you're going to need to get new RAM for your computer. If it does not, you're going to need to work on your CPU, which is right under here. Now in some computers, including this one, the CPU does not become attached. It is part of the motherboard. And if you've gotten this far, you're going to need to just replace the entire motherboard. But if you're lucky and your CPU does come out, then all you're going to need to do is take this heatsink off, which I will do now. Peel that off, and that's the CPU. So if you can take it out, you're going to want to swap the CPU and reseat it, just like the RAM. Take it out and then put it back in properly, test it, and then you're going to want to swap, just like we did the RAM. Take this CPU out and put a new one back in. If this still doesn't work, you need a new motherboard. If the CPU swap does work, then you need to replace the CPU. Yes, it really can be that easy to diagnose your own computer. As I have promised, I will put the link to the free diagnostic flowchart down in the description. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to comment them and I'll get back as soon as I can. If you would like to see the whole series, I will put the full playlist up here. And if you'd like to see more content like this, subscribe and enable notifications so that you don't miss any of my new videos. And I will see you next time.